Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon, and thank you so much for being here for this last doc. Uh, my name is Krithi Talam. I am a postdoc with the Machine Learning and Analytics Group and uh, within the Scientific Data Division at Lawrence Berkeley with Michael Mahoney and Ben Erickson. Um, and today I'll be talking a little bit about the challenges and solutions of generative AI for image watermarking security. Um, okay. All right. So, uh, ooh. hey, Kriti, can you go in a full screen mode? Uh, I'm okay. Yes. Let me. Does that work better? Perfect. Great. Okay. Uh, all right, so Gen AI is an advanced type of ML machine learning, and within that we have LLMs, large language models, and text to image models. And those are because they're currently the most mature and deployable kinds. Um, within that, text to image models have kind of garnered attention because they have an ability to generate realistic images from textual descriptions. So those models enable us to visualize concepts, scenes, even objects from purely textual input. And that kind of offers this immense value in fields like AI security, even gaming, virtual reality, et cetera. There are key challenges um, within text to image generation. And one of them is maintaining coherence and fidelity between the textual input and the generated image. And so advanced techniques like machine learning and deep neural networks are often employed to ensure this accuracy reflects the semantics of the input text. So within this first slide, I kind of wanted to show how this, this uh, field has progressed Starting with basic computer programming, everyone knows those automated chat bots, but they're usually non-tailored content. And then it kind of developed into early machine learning. So we had low quality manipulated videos, et cetera. And there was some distribution by procedural bots. And now we're sort of in generative AI, which is high quality tailored fake text and images at scale. Text image models like Midjourney or Dolly to use kind of clever tricks to create images. The model's been trained on millions of labeled images. They're represented numerically and projected into a latent space. And the model learns slowly to add noise until the image is completely random. And then that process can be reversed. So a text using a text prompt, the prompt, the model starts with random pixels, slowly removes noise until it matches the text or text plus an image input by the user. And then finally, the model upscales the generated image to produce better quality, um, outputting a synthetic image that sometimes is hard to distinguish from a real photograph. And so text to image models are particularly well suited to image manipulation because they can be taught to perform specific tasks. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking about chat GPT right now, which it works surprisingly well out of the box. Um, it's called zero shot prompting, where basically given computer vision or NLP natural language processing synthetic tasks, like um, write five tweets from NASCAR fans and use a certain accent, talk about their favorite race car drivers, ChatGPT's output can be, can't wait to see my boy Kyle Bush tearing up the asphalt on some speedway. So we argue in this study that the emergence of ubiquitous generative AI can expand and also enable malign influence operations. Um, and I believe uh, Gen AI makes that more plausible and harder to detect and more attractive to malign actors because these efforts are now becoming cheaper and more efficient and may inspire new malign attacks. So one of these um, text image diffusion models is called models is called stable diffusion. And they're capable of generating a wide variety of novel images in all kinds of styles, as you can see here. These systems are general purpose image generation tools. So they're able to generate art, but also photorealistic de depictions of fake events for malicious purposes. And therefore, as I've said earlier, visual differences between these AI generated images and real images, real meaning images that humans take or catalog are becoming hard to identify as these models get stronger. And so the potential abuse of text to image models motivates the development of watermarks for their outputs. A watermarked image is essentially a generated image containing a signal that is invisible often to humans and yet marks the image as machine generated. And so essentially it documents the use of image generation systems enabling say social media news organizations other diffusion platforms themselves to mitigate harms or cooperate with law enforcement or tag um, you know, large scale data sets by identifying the origin of the image. 
So within the watermarking uh, space, there's something called invisible visible watermarking. And within that, there's two types, unseen visible watermarking, UVW, and imperceptible visible watermarking, which is a mouthful, IVW. The UVW al algorithms embed imperceptibly a watermark pattern through a visible watermarking strategy. They essentially take advantage of image enhancement functions such as brightness, contrast, gamma, et cetera, to exhibit without any additional computational algorithms, the watermark to a human system, meaning to, to our eyes. But the IVW has been proposed as a solution to several drawbacks that are represented within UVW, where basically something like a QR code as a watermark is exhibited, um, which reduces the readability and the capacity for it to be correctly decoded by common applications. There's a paper recently um, by Wen in 2023, the, where basically they first show, they show the first truly invisible watermark. So essentially what that means is there were no post hoc modifications to the image. So instead an image is drawn from a modified distribution. That distribution is of generated Im images that are imperceptibly modified. And this way, the actual sample carries no watermark in, say, the classical additive sense. But an algorithmic analysis of the image can detect the watermark with high accuracy. So basically, it materializes in minor changes as well in the potential layouts of a generated scene. That could be the foreground or the background that essentially cannot be distinguished from other random samples by human inspection. And this approach is something that Wen calls tree ring watermarking. So it's based on the it's based on the patterns imprinted into the Fourier space of the noise vector of a diffusion model, which can easily can be easily incorporated into existing diffusion models and is in, is invisible on a per sample basis. So the watermark embeds a pattern into the initial initial noise vector for sampling. The patterns are structured in the Fourier space, so they're invariant to convolutions, crops, dilations, um, aspects of ML training that we all are familiar with. And after image generation, the watermark signal is detected by inverting the diffusion process to re retrieve the noise vector, which is then checked for an embedded signal. So it basically demonstrates that this technique can be easily applied to arbitrary diffusion models, including text conditions stable diffusion. And so their watermark is semantically hidden in the image space. And they claim and say that it's therefore far more robust than watermarking alternatives currently being deployed. In our pipeline, there's a two-step process. The trained encoder is used to imprint the watermark onto the training data for a generative model. And this leads to a trained generative model, where the watermark encoder is baked into the model, making it easier to generate watermarked data. So again, recapping, the goal of watermarking in our case is to allow for image generation without quality degradation while enabling, say, the model owner like myself or my team to the ability to identify if a given image is generated from their model. Meanwhile, watermarked images are used, th these same watermarked images are used in everyday applications, subject to a number of image manipulations and modifications. So we formalize that as an adversary who tries to remove the watermark in the generated image to evade detection using common image manipulations. But informally, we're also interested in watermark robustness across common usage. So ultimately, this setup leads to somewhat of a threat model that can act sequentially. We chose diffusion models because of the ease of training with sim simple and efficient loss functions and their ability to generate highly realistic images. This approach can convert an array of Gaussian noise into a clean image. And we choose the initial no noise array so that its Fourier transform contains a carefully construct constructed pattern near its center. And that pattern, which I, will, which I showed formally, is called its key back here. Um, so we have our key right here. And this initial, initial noise factor is then converted into an image using the standard diffusion pipeline with no modifications. To detect the watermark in the image, the diffusion model is inverted uh, using the process talked about previously to retrieve the original noise array used for generation. And that array is then checked to see whether the key is present. And rather than imprinting the key into the Gaussian array directly, which could cause no, no, noticeable patterns in the resulting image, which is something we're still exploring right now, and you'll see this in a second, we imprint the key ideally into the Fourier transform of the starting noise vector. Okay, so uh, recent deep learning based approaches have shown promising results for a challenging task of something, something called uh, in painting. 
um, where basically there, you can in-paint large missing regions in an image. It's a feed forward, fully convolutional neural network, which can process images with multiple holes at arbitrary locations, as you can see here, with variable sizes during test time. And so these methods can generate visually plausible image structures and textures, but they kind of create distorted structures or blurry text inconsistent with surrounding areas. Um, so this is, some, this is a, a uh, strategy we are exploring to be able to uh, overlay onto our watermarking pipeline. So essentially what I've talked about so far, image generation, we use stable diffusion to generate images given a series of prompts. We are attempting to break tree written watermark at the end of the day, remove the watermarks from those images. And we're creating a mask in our case in painting to paint in the masks pixels. For in painting, our generator network takes an image with white pixels and outputs a final completed image. Um, it, where these basically these white pixels are filled in holes and a binary mask indicates the whole regions as input pairs and outputs the final completed image. We pair the input with a corresponding binary mask to handle holes. So really all I wanna show here is as you can see with different hyperparameters, we have different outputs for what was an original image of a lady with red hair. Um, depending on the parameters we tune, we see certain outputs and that's something we're playing with right now. We apply inverse random masks onto our data sets. Um, they work by basically randomly masking out certain regions of an image and then inverting those masks to preserve the information outside of those masked regions. So they're useful because they introduce variability into our training data sets um, while kind of still maintaining integrity of the original information. And that can help models become more robust and adaptable and transferable to different real world scenarios where objects may be partially occluded or obscured. And if we are taking this into real world data sets that are not a bunch of images, but could be climate data, could be any kind of scientific data, then we would want to have a transferable method. So four steps, random masking, inverting, masking, preserving information, and then training our data um, augmentation, which I think for the sake of time, I may not go into. And I see something in the chat. Um, okay. Okay, um, at this point, I'm not sure, I can't see everyone. I'd love to know how much time I have left. Um, you're done. <laughs> you're okay, um, all right, so should I, should I wrap up at this point? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to talk about a little bit more about the more exciting part of this, um, but essentially these are some randomized examples from randomized prompts we've tried for stable diffusion. So we have no watermark, watermark conservative attacks and drastic attacks. And um, I won't be able to get into that today, but we are assessing p-values to look at thresholds of detection for watermarks um, essentially and see if our pipeline that I've talked about today um, can remove the watermarks from these images. Okay. Um, yeah, so here are some future questions that we're looking at asking. Um, which I'm happy to talk about after this or um, postdoc and acknowledgement. So thanks to these folks who have helped uh, significantly with this project. <laughs>